Hello guys, welcome back to Fields and Friends podcast where we discuss about the problems in agriculture in Cameroon and also the fact that we are students in the Faculty of Agriculture, agricultural students. We're also going to be discussing on how we are going to solve these problems and also put in our innovative experience based on what we have been doing and what we are planning to do yes, so that we can discuss about all of these problems in agriculture in Cameroon. So our topic for today is what to do after you leave school. That's what are you going to do? Are you going to be an entrepreneur? Are you going to have a job? So I'm your host, Ojong Zilan, and here are my colleagues. Um, good afternoon, I'm Butame Peter, 400 level in AB. Good afternoon, I'm Bambole Marine Vela, level 400 FST. That's all. I'm Joshua. Founder level AD. That is our conversation now. So the topic, as we said, what are you going to do after you leave the Faculty of Agriculture? And we had been discussing about this this uh, topic before we entered the the set. So it was it's not like it's something that was was trying we are trying to talk about it now. So, uh, Peter, give me your own input. What are you, what do you think you're going to do after you leave school? Uh, like you rightly said, there, there, are, there could be two options that you can look at. Traditional employment, that's nine to five. And then you have um, starting a business as an entrepreneur. You know, first of all, the raison d'etre for the Faculty of Agriculture is um, we are trying to groom entrepreneurs. So, let's say, as a student in the faculty, you are, if you are not obliged, but you are highly encouraged to pursue a, a job, um, uh, entrepreneurship instead of traditional employment. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the two, the two, the two sides, right? Employment has its own gains and losses, and then traditional employment has its own gains and losses. And then there are also other forms, like you have. I was saying earlier that yeah, you can you can you can work full time at the same time you are the owner of a business that's you can you can have equity in a business mm -hmm. in an agriculture business but generally in my own take in all this is that as an agricultural practitioner the very first thing you should look at yeah. is starting a business and now so many people ask the question why start a business yeah i don't have capital there's supper there's this there's that there's that there's taxes this yes the first thing is that nowadays we have the a growing trend in uh, around issues relating to climate change and if you want to talk about climate change in Cameroon one of the first things that you can talk about that climate change is affecting is agriculture yeah. which means that what the agricultural sector is nowadays attracting a lot of finance funding either from the government or from private individuals so many mm -hmm. people are interested in solving the global challenge of climate change and so many people feel like it is if if you want to solve that problem in Africa, not only in Cameroon, Africa in general, or even maybe even in Southeast Asia, the very first the very first thing that people would like to look into is is um, agriculture, right? Mm -hmm. And they are looking like to invest into in in credible businesses, or I don't know how to say if it is really credible, but I would say so many people are looking at physical projects that have not only climate benefit, but also um, uh, uh, economic benefit. Because you know, people, a society where so many people are frustrated and stuff, it, you just worsen the, the global crisis. Yeah. So that's my take. I, I personally, I think you can start a business after school. You can, you can follow what we've been studying in school, right? Package your business stuff, identify a problem, those basic stuff. Yeah, and generally, so let's listen to yeah. my Noel. Okay, um, entrepreneurship and traditional employment. Yeah. I think that choice should be based on the individual because there are some people that like that prefer being told what to but do. What do you think? Let, let me enter. <laughs> let me enter. I'm still interested. <laughs> some people okay. prefer someone telling them what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like do this, be here at this time, be here at this time. And others just they want to do their, their yeah. thing themselves. So, I might think now. I think that it's better to go for entrepreneurship. Reason being that 
I don't really like when the mommy tells me to do this, to do that. Yes, and keeps on reminding me all the time. But I think entrepreneurship is better than traditional employment. You have, you are flexible with your schedule. You can do other things while yeah. focusing on your yeah. business and stuff like that. So even once we are being taught that my department for science and technology, yeah. it's more it makes more sense to go for entrepreneurship than employment. Let's say like all these big companies are the rest. Let's say if you're an anglophone, just put it like that. If you're is it's more difficult for you to get a job in Tawana unless you want to work in an industry like Nestle, Brother. But the Anglophones will do her but job. Yeah, but it's actually kind of difficult. Even with language barrier, it's kind of difficult mm-hmm. to do that. The Cameroon is bilingual. It's that bilingual, yes. That would be always the only stuff that's what you're doing. Don't really want to learn French away from what wants to do. Yeah. You feel me now? Yeah. So I think it's better for you to go in for you know, I think that there's been a trend of change regards to the matter of what you hear. You know, while we're young, you're telling us go to school, work hard, better have a good certificate, and you can have a good job. It's still, even still now, it happens. Yes, it still, it, it still happens, you know, but to a large extent, you know, the, the language, the communications of even our parents have changed because yeah. of this issue of inflation. You can have a, you know, I mean, I had a story of someone in Nigeria. She was, uh, I think, she had a woman, you know, she had the kind of job. What was that? A work custom. And she said, ever since she's been starting working, that's some four years ago, her salary, she's been having promotions on her salary. Yeah. But her salary has never cost $1,000. It's always been $1,000. That means they can pay her 150 k At one point, it would be $1,000. They pay her 250 k it will still be 1,000 dollars. If you are 350 k, it will still be because of the exchange rate. Yeah, somehow it's, because it's, of the exchange yeah, rate. Now, what I'm trying to say is that there are several issues. There are several external issues that impact, you know, a constant salary. So you may have 10k today, and the back of rice you could buy yesterday, you will no longer be able to buy it today. That's the disadvantage of having salary. Mm-hmm. So I think this our parents have understood that, and they begin to encourage their youth to somehow engage more on entrepreneurship. But you know. There is a big challenge with entrepreneurship in our nation and sometimes in Africa at large. I think the system doesn't really permit us to explore it and so many youths are beginning to be afraid yeah, of stepping yeah. into it. I, I don't know if you're giving the permission, but see, this is, I think it's something we should talk about. No, it's, it's, it's okay. What does it cost? I don't know. So, what does it take? Because we are saying, everybody is saying, okay, it's good, we should go in for entrepreneurship, we should go in for entrepreneurship, it's better than a job. But what does it take actually to put be, in a business? Yeah, to be an entrepreneur. What does it take to be an entrepreneur? Hmm. I think that's a question that if you can answer yet. Yeah. Many, mm-hmm. many more people listening to us to be able to like, okay, so they, So I, can you answer the question? No, I think, let me let me see if I can chip into that. I think being an entrepreneur is not, it's not all about just um, starting a business and okay. making money. Yeah, I think the consistency and discipline you bring into it, that's what actually yeah. makes you to be successful with an entrepreneurial job. And it's not like some people say, um, don't work hard, work smart. Mm-hmm. I think you have to, some, you work hard in the beginning, then at one point in time you work smart. Excellent. Based on the fact that you have learned some experience and now you can be able to um, use those experience to, to, uh, to, to work smart. Yeah, to uh, work smart. Yeah, so because, it does it. Because there's a, there's a growing trend in motivational speakers are saying no. Oh, <laughs> yes, it's, it's true now. So many people are saying work smart. I used to read those things and I, sometimes I used to just laugh. You you want to work smart when you have not worked hard. Yeah, no how how. There's no, it's way. no it's, it's, there's no way you can go. There's no uh, easy uh, way. Right, right, right. Um, mean, sorry, sorry for question. In the morning, you know, when we're talking about it, you asked me a question. You said if all of us become entrepreneurs, if all of all of us want to own, yes. why are the ones who are going to who are the ones who will be working for those entrepreneurs? Because all of us cannot become entrepreneurs. Yes. How do you think all of us cannot become? All of us cannot become entrepreneurs. That's why I was trying to. The reason why all of us cannot become entrepreneurs, right? The very first thing that we are taught in school, right, Mm -hmm. is that look, a business is a problem that you want to solve. Yeah. The problems are everywhere. And when you want to solve that that problem, you have to bring in management expertise, finance, and so on, which mm-hmm. now equate into financial gains in terms of profit in your business that you are doing. Yeah. There are some people that they are good at identifying problems, but they don't have they don't know how to manage. 
there are others that are good managers, but they don't know how to. I don't know. They don't know how to get finance and stuff. They so every you understand. Box. So to get a typical entrepreneur, is somebody that is able to find that balance. He was talking earlier about discipline. Not everybody is disciplined. There are people that are fi- they are fighting literally with their bosses every day because mm-hmm. either they come late, they don't do things on time and stuff. Some of them even get fired and stuff. That's that's and only that fact alone that so many people are not willing to adapt. So many people are not willing to be disciplined enough. Mm-hmm. It's already enough proof that not everybody can become an entrepreneur. You know, I believe that I think that entrepreneurship is not an activity. It's a mindset. It's mm-hmm. a mindset that you should sustain. Because the difference really between a job and entrepreneurship is that in a job you're secured, you know at the end of the month, come when comes on, you have a salary. Yes. And there's, there's even the extreme part of it when you start working for the States. You know that, when I go to the office, so I don't go to the office, ah, my salary will pass. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's, that's what we call job security. And that's what many people are going for, especially in the Western region. But now, the problem with entrepreneurship is that it is risk-based. It's a risk speed. It's that's why I say it's a mindset. It is demanding and it, it demands the courage to put in money you don't have. In fact, it demands the courage to go and borrow large sum of money. It demands the patience to wait for your project to grow. It demands the inspiration to find a problem and begin to think about the solution. So um, not everybody can become entrepreneur, but even those who are, is you were mentioning that there are some people who need to find a balance. That's why, you know, I was yeah. mentioning before the podcast something like entrepreneur and entrepreneur. Yes. I think it's a good point because there are some people who are entrepreneurs, that is, they are called for to manage a business. Mm-hmm. You know, they are the board of directors. Yeah. There are some people who are called for to own a business. They are the one putting in the money. So I think if we can you know, find this balance, um, those who are supposed to be entrepreneurs, those who are called to be managers of such businesses, and those who are called for to put in their money, into those businesses we are going to find a balance but then i have a problem with really first our educational system they don't teach us to be entrepreneur to be able to make money they're teaching us it's for them not teaching you balance sheet see that's not it entrepreneurship is not this you can't study it it's a mindset did they not teach you risk management <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm telling you you can't you can't study did they not teach you budgeting you can't study okay what entrepreneurship. okay you what? see entrepreneurship doesn't start with budgeting it starts with inspiration Inspiration. It starts with contemplation. He said it's a, every business is a problem solved. So they should teach you how to see the problem in society. They're not there's no cause on that. There's, I was telling when we went to buy some stuff in the supermarket. You don't teach us financial intelligence. There's no cause financial intelligence. Understanding how money operates globally. Understanding understanding you know the, the flow of money. The flow really how money works. Is that not really politics? Which what do you mean by politics? <laughs> what do you mean by politics? It's geopolitics. It's geopolitics. That's why you don't. It's more to... of geopolitics. You know, than I, I watched a documentary one day about school. How school came about. Why they created school. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go into the deep details. It was one businessman. Mm-hmm. We needed people who have some level of training to be able to work in his oil company. I think so. If my, my brain doesn't play me tricks. And he said, okay, I want a lot. He wants to expand his business, but he needs some level of qualified labor. He doesn't want people who are going to come and be innovative. He yeah. wants people who are going to come and be submissive. Yeah, they do what they okay. do. So the school was in short created with a specific curriculum to train people to just obey their boss. That's why I say when you graduate, you want to have a job. Job is just obey your boss so the school in in a large extent is training people on how to be submissive to authority okay that's why the, the educational right? no i agree i i know i'm going to come in i wanted to actually come in well all of us here have actually said entrepreneurship 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 he has criticized entrepreneurship in, in cameroon here that supports name of but i want to i want us to actually look at the statistics on how things are going now. I was reading an article from Bloomberg, if I'm not mistaken, Bloomberg was saying that about 80% or if not more than that, let me say at least 80% of startups, youth startups in Africa, mm-hmm. fail within the first two years. Wow. Yeah. And the remaining 20% that are left, about 60% of them fail within the first That's five right. years of it. Now the question is that why are entrepreneurs failing? 
those those that have decided to take that bold step so going for because you say entrepreneurship is a mindset yes mm-hmm. those who have decided to like take this step into entrepreneurship why are they failing you know the... and not to also and not to just end there you know i was reading that article i was trying to find out exactly because when you talk about entrepreneurship it's very broad and the article was not basically only about agriculture mm-hmm. was talking about a number of things so i was going through and then just recently i was also going through another article by an american who lives in kenya he said i think he should be a journalist or something so he published a list of startups that were funded in 2020 by the way they were called series funding no series funding that's you, you do like crowdfunding mm-hmm. you can say okay i'm having a business if you invest in this business after this number of years you get this amount of yeah. returns blah 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 you know investors especially the western investors they like those kinds of projects and especially if you are going to prove to them that the, the business has substance not only profit substance inside mm-hmm. so he, he gave me the list he gave a list of about 20 that have failed and all of them secured funding of all of them secured funding of plus one million dollars that's about 500 million for and after 2020 21 22 23 all of them have collapsed those 20 I, st- I took time to like go through to understand i was looking first of all i did not see any agriculture there mm-hmm. that's the first thing but the others we talk about logistics some we talk about um transport if it's still logistics majority of them talk about transport and logistics like that and uh, you know a, a few were talking about health some students brought up with some innovative ideas i look at their teams i went to some of them their website they have qualified persons then i was like hey, what is really the problem that with all this kind of huge amount of money to young persons that are under 30 and not even up to even they cannot even survive past the fifth year with yeah. that then i was asking myself that what is really the problem but more importantly i was saying that so many people are saying that they don't want to invest in agriculture because of the risk i don't think we have said it here if you study what we're studying and even if you go to banks it's difficult to get loans or finance from for an agricultural project compared to a real estate project or something and even insurance and so on you understand then i was asking myself which is the question i want to throw to you joshua because you are you are you are, you are giving us the impression that okay entrepreneurship is the best hey, this is, entrepreneurship is a mindset ah okay what about those that have received money what has happened those that have the expertise what has happened and i say come back to the very point that agriculture is a mindset kfc how many times did you fail you failed a number of times a number of times they finally found that magic tool that makes business. And, uh, so and that is why, that so, is why failure, that's what I was saying, you have to be ready to take risk. Well, I was telling you in the morning, an entrepreneur someone who, when he invests, he has a, he has a proportion of his heart connected towards the possibility that he will fail. And he will pick up himself after he fails. So many failures will lead to success. You know, there is this point that you mentioned, see, a, like a staircase of mistake, 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 until you see success. The question is, are investors going to care? Are investors, you are talking about getting finance. Yes, yes. So you, you said yeah. without yeah. money. Mm-hmm. You understand? Without money. Now, look. now this is the other side of it. This is okay. the other side of it. Start small. That's what we call them startups. Mm-hmm. You're starting small. I remember the last time you told me that you don't like this. I really started <laughs> small. I, and I was thinking, while I was walking down to the, to the studio, I was really thinking, I must come to the point where I encourage starting small, but I personally don't like it. Mm-hmm. Now, you are supposed, and I was, this was my contribution, especially with the faculty of agriculture. We are being taught to, start, to, to do um, you know, entrepreneurship, and it is for you to gain expertise, you need to start small. So while preparing for this podcast, I was really thinking, I was like, okay, so what am I going to do? I hate small things, you know. I had a friend who was working a small mill farm, probably about the size of this room, or two times the size of this room. And, you know, when she invited me to the farm to come and help her plant the mills, while I was doing, I sat at one point and I started thinking, how many days are you coming to the farm? What is the cost of it? How much are you going to get at the end of it? Oh. If you were to pay yourself, how much would you, would you, you, would you be planting to sell? Yes. But it, you know, the farm was just so small and the labor was just so hard. And I asked her, how much okay, do you estimate you can get from it? It was not able to pay herself for what it did she was working in the farm. So she was not even self employed. 
She was overworking herself. She was underemployed. She was underemployed. But, but, but a maze farm the size of this room should not be much more. Maze, the, the way we plan maize here is not... Is we don't mostly go to the farm every day. No, that after, day. After planting. That lady was working out. She was working out herself. She means she was, she was going to the farm as if she was planting. As she was, I'm telling you. And you know, when I even started making the calculations, I was like, it's, it's not worth because she wanted me to help her to partner with her lady. If that was really, it's not that time I was not too my time well. So mm -hmm. that was actually I said my first business discussion. So I was like, no, this business is not worth it. Now you can start small, do the labor you need to do. You can start small for two things. First, for gaining experience and skills. If you're gaining experience and skills, you should be, for example, you say you're gaining technical skills or the financial intelligence. Do something small. Most of most of the time in Europe, the business is you know market gardening is done in small area. Do small, and maximize profit out of it. So you, you you must not start big. An entrepreneur, one of the things we call this of an entrepreneur is patience. Patience to see your business grow and progress to the point where you get to put even. So those who are filled, it's all in the mindset issue, and that's what they're not teaching us in school. But they you do. You know that when you start small, you have to compete with the market, right? You have to compete with the market. So let's say me with my one hectare of tomato, and let's say how they call this man with, with other estate in Kumba. Um, let's say one other farmer has um, 40 hectares of tomato. He puts his 200 and something baskets, freshly plucked tomatoes on the farm. I'll I'll bring that. my two baskets and come and start. I'll Who do you that think? I'll tell you first of all, the, the difference between the two be in terms of the pricing. Yes. Since it's you sell yeah, it cheaper. Yeah, yeah, so then you know what I will say also is that in, in the when when I was pitching this project, um, somebody asked me, so what about the markets in are you sure you're going for the market? In Africa, in farm in the agricultural sector, there's little or no competition. Mm -hmm. Because the demand is there. I think so. I think. But uh recently I've been even in a place that I call uh Susa. You know Susa in yeah. the mm -hmm. region when yes. you are going to the West Region. Yeah. Right? Very good day you see and like on this like Thursday, good day you see farmers have you see Liam like from here to UB Junction. It's <laughs> not the problem of competition, it's problem of logistics. Listen, not really okay, if you want to look at it like that, look, mm -hmm. that's why they have differentiated. There's international market, there's regional market, there's local market. Yes. It's clear that in their local market, very, very clear. Farmers are unable to break even because there is no even the supply is too much for demand. Supply is over. It's too much. That's that, that's your, that's the still boils down to the point of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneurial guy will know that that is not a problem to solve, so it's not something to invest in. So we are actually boiling down to the very mindset issue. You will not invest. You will not go to a place where there is over yam, and you want to keep on planting. Okay, yeah, you have been talking about mindset issue. Here, yes. Also. Wait, Peter, let me know, Patricia. Now that you are talking about this entrepreneurial stuff, stuff, stuff. Yeah, in the faculty of agriculture. What will you tell maybe a bunch of two hundred students that have graduated? What should they do? What should they do? They don't, first, they don't. You know, all of them have very diverse backgrounds. Some will have their money that maybe they can tell their uncle that okay, I want to start this business. They give them about two hundred something thousand to start be a poetry farm or some meat farm. Some of them they graduated on. 2.5 GPA and then they, they don't even receive the 50k grant that they were supposed to give. <laughs> See, <laughs> then, then now they are outside now and they are like, what can I do? What can I do? One, so what will you tell them? One day I met um, last two weeks ago. I was in the taxi. I was dressed in my overall, and it was a guy who interviewed me, and he was he asked me, are you a family? I said yes. He said, which family? Doing anything? You know, that's nice. That's so why I asked. He said, I was in Palermo too. Was a so I used the opportunity, I was like, no, so I think, well, how is life after graduation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is it you do? I mean, how do you go? She really advised me to go for a job. This very issue, I asked him that he ought to seek self-employment. And he told me, um, obviously, self-employment is the best. But you know, the problem, the main issue was this lack of capital, lack of funds, which actually boils us down to the real investors. Now, I will not talk to a favorite student who just graduated because at that point, the minimal chances, if being yet in school, you sure? not develop the mindset. Yes, you have to develop the mindset. You know, Why you not? You know, jo Joshua, there's one thing that you have been saying, which I was about to ask you. Now, we talk about the mindset, mindset, mindset. We also talk about the fact that he's not advisable to access to them because you never know his experience. Look, the thing is that this world is a global world. The world is not linear. 
the mindset that you might be talking about, you have to know that Mary, for example, the books that she reads and other things that she does, you know the same thing I did, you understand? Yeah. And it's the same to me, it's the same to Ijilan. So you are making it to look like as if there's a particular mindset that an entrepreneur needs to have to succeed. There are people that have the best mind and they have failed. And they have failed until they have finally gone into gone to traditional employment. What I mean by by that I mean um, nine to five, you understand? Mm-hmm. So it goes beyond this mindset thing that you are saying. It goes beyond this mindset. And more importantly, I wanted to also point out the fact that if I can recall very well the bulk of what you have said about identifying the problem, which I also said, inspiration and all that stuff. They have been taught in Favem. You understand? They have been taught in Favem. I think it's the way they teach. Really? Yeah. Yeah. For me now, let me let me not lie. For me, eh, since I entered this school in Favem, I've always praised majority of the lecturers because they give us more than what we need. You understand? I will not lie to you. Mm-hmm. If you leave the if you leave Favem, for example, Favem, not that all Arabic schools, Favem, and you go outside, you realize that majority of the things that have been anyway it's subjective. Maybe it depends on your department. As far as A B is concerned, from 200 level till now, it's not now that when I was in 200 level, I remember a lecturer gave us an assignment. That, that lecturer that said that we should make agriculture to be sexy. She was the person that gave an assignment at 200 level. She said that they, everybody in class should do a pitch on their project. He forced us. That was my first time to talk in public. I was very shy and timid. I don't know public speaking. I don't know how to pitch myself before somebody. You understand? She forced all of us. Students rioted and reported her and did all kinds of things because students felt like she was doing too much. You understand? But from, at that oh, time, I was joining I was joining the queue to criticize. Later on, I realized that, man, yeah, not only this madam, <laughs> <understand>? <laughs> not only this lecturer, you understand, a host of the rest, they give us, I mean, they taught us balance sheet, all those things. They give us challenging assignments. They give us challenging exams, top-notch exams that you go to write to Harvard. It's the same standard. But why is it that Harvard students find it easy to succeed in this way? But we, with almost the same knowledge that we are receiving, see, in this very, us. very... You claim that this agriculture in Cameroon has a lot of opportunities. That's what you say. I said. But why is it that we are not seeing Favem students with this quality of education that they have received, not thriving in this society? I think, I think to uh, answer what you are saying, it's just that, like I said, the way they teach. Hmm? Look okay. at, look at, they, so they teach you balance sheet, they teach you how to do, write a budget plan. Like how Mr. Aswa gave us an assignment to write a strategic plan, a strategic, five year, five, five year, year strategic, strategic plan, plan. For an organization. The whole yes. class, only two poor wrote strategic plan, the whole class went a whole budget plan. Including Then, me. then now, uh, I, 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 that means the way I structured my uh, budget plan, nah, that means I can you submit mean, it somewhere and the, the, the funding now. If you know, say, if you know, I know, that, I know that I've, I've, I've done the assignment to the fullest. You know what the man did? You know, zero that I count, zero that I put on that. He said, you know, one budget plan, one type of strategic plan. And there's this thing in, in, the, in the university. They always train our minds for exams. They always train our minds to write exams and pass. They don't, they don't, I don't think they train, only a few teachers actually train their students to be able to, to answer a question, understand it, and actually apply what they have learned outside. But it's not a teacher's full responsibility for this problem. Remember, I recall that they have been telling us the work is 80% yours and 20% the teachers. Mm-hmm. Meaning that what? If they teach you balance sheet today and you intend to start a business in the next three years mm-hmm. as an agricultural entrepreneur, go. Even if it's YouTube or where, go and do your research. Okay, balance sheet for an agricultural projects. Common mistakes that are made. That's that one the teacher cannot choose. And even if the teacher choose, there are many Cameroon. Cameroonians are very, very good at at receiving ready-made goods, eh? And still not in, and still not knowing how to use it. Let me be frank. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. So if left to me, I'm not really fully disagreeing with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Left to me, I appreciate the quality of the teacher because no, they teach. They have, most of most of the teachings I have received over it has opened my mind. Today I can stand before an investor and pitch myself. You understand? And pitch it. Not that I'm guaranteed to succeed, to, but to at least I know that. On a very good day, I have a good chance to succeed. You understand? Mm. And that is, that is, that is, for me, that's the most important thing. Which brings us back to what we're talking about the other time. Mm. What, why do you come to Favem? 
what's your reason literally to come why what does it mean to be an agricultural student why did you come here if you don't have like i was telling mary one day that i look at the way students study in the netherlands and i look at the way people study in cameroon you understand i notice one big difference in the netherlands when you start your bsc thesis that thesis you take it bsc msc phd meaning that what before i say that the problem you identify in your bsc level you must defend it right up to phd that's how not yet that you start you're just you're just playing around no. is it fully the teacher's problem it's no. not fully the no, teacher's no, we problem cannot, we cannot put we cannot point fingers on our lecturers all, that's what i'm saying yeah, they are excellent in their job and most of them they are overworking themselves for yes so that's why it's bringing us down what what the lecturer would teach in a class of 50 students the way you will take it let's say when maybe dylan will take it let's say when we take it let's say when will take it you, we're talking about the books we read, that the books may we read is not the same books I may read or the books you may read. You're talking about the further research you may make on the lecturers are giving you in school, on the lecturers are giving you in school, going to YouTube and watching videos. It's not the same way all of us are going. So yeah. it brings us back to the very mindset issue. And where I started by talking, when we introduced the topic, I told you that there's been a, a growing trend of change in the aspect, in this very aspect. You were telling us, get a job. Go to school, get good grades, get a job. That's why majority of the students are GPA, GPA, GPA. Yes. They study for GPA. Exam After the GPA is gone, all the lecturers they were taught are gone because they want to have a job. And they tell you, if you want to have a job, have a good certificate. That was a trend. That's why I, that's why I started where I started. But now, what we need to do is to create the awareness. Tell students that, boy, nobody's going to ask you for what you're studying in school. You're going to defend it on the field. So when students begin to know it this way, that that's when school can now begin to be Helpful. We have a lecturer. I love him so much. My lecturer in school, Dr. Ekani. That's one lecturer that explains to us the difference between public goods and merit goods in such a way that I mean, it blew my mind. There was there is this one that is in every book, you know, and and he came and told us that there is a problem when he came to come when his heart bled because they tell students that when they ask and so, answer and so. So every student so that if you just as you just start reading the question, especially the MCQ, you don't have to finish, you already just you already, answer. Answer. <laughs> you already know the answer. And that's the fun with these past questions. So the majority of students, you know, they know that we don't may not read all those things, especially when I was doing when we we're doing the course uh, about technology. Genetics, genetics. Yeah. See, you they can give you all the notes in school. Just go and ask the past questions, the questions always give themselves. So one week to the exam, just sit on your past questions, cram the things after what bam. The exam before that you have an A. You have and an you A. Be happy that but no, you, if they ask you any question or nothing, you will not know anything. So yeah. it still boils down. We, we are not studying to learn. We are studying for it. So it is if we can solve the problem. That's of, what I was saying. If we can raise raise their mindset, if we can raise their awareness that boy, school is not for job sake. Or, or job will not help you. Okay. Develop your mind to such a point that you know you can begin to serve, spawn, self motivate yourself, knowing that you believe in your capacities, even if you feel 10,000 times. You believe there's that one, one, one thing. Okay, so we are talking about feeling 10,000 times. I, point, I pointed out the issue of what people will be, people will be giving you finance mm -hmm. or what they think, right? Yes. Okay, how about you during that period? How do you survive? You see, that's the reason why you find so many people running from entrepreneurship and going back. The risk, but before before because you, you continue, maybe yes. let me hear your own point of view. <laughs> because I'm sitting there, I'm listening to us talking. It's a learning process. The thing is only possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, it, it's always dodgy. So tell us now, how do you, if surely with women, you know there are girls in the faculty mm. of agriculture, and maybe they also want to come out. You said you want to be an entrepreneur. Yes. So. Which probably would have a culture and the way things are, how do you think that's going to work? With our culture as a... That's the way, the way we get like, you know, everything now is um, uh, male oriented. If you, maybe, I know, I know now like that, they always tell us that they favor girls when they want mm. to do employment and stuff. And stuff like I know that. that when a female hears that, if I drop my application here, or this guy that has three point something, I have two point. The oh, probability yeah. that they will take me is even higher, is than, even higher than him. Yes. So do you think that that girl want to go and start a business? No. Yes. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. she rather stay. She rather stay now and maybe and there's another trend of uh, 
that that's going on in Shia in Boya. Yeah. Most girls want to be the nurses. Yes. Okay. Online marketers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't understand now that normally it's an entrepreneurial event or the online marketing stuff. Yes. We we'll have to do research about the nursing thing because I'm more understanding sincerely. This is that are very yeah. the my studies, the steady salary and the rest of they don't want the stress Really? Is that yes. would, okay? How many hospitals are in Boyaya that are going to That's accommodate the all the these nurses? Research. My junior sister is a four five and she's telling me that she wants to be a nurse. No, all of when they finish, I was shocked. You I was just like, go Jesus. To the hospital, attend to a few patients, and you go back home. Same thing at the end of the month, you pay for your salary. And, like, and, nurses, and that I life is not boring. And I even heard that nurses don't even earn as much. So I'm like, it's, it's just for, it's just to come back to the very job security. You just wonder, okay, at the end of the morning, you just have my salary. It's because the country is very unpredictable. Life is very unpredictable. Even not boys, that's the country. Life very, and people want to be secure. People want a place where they can have, okay, at the end of the month, I have my like twenty five thousand or thirty thousand. Oh, that's not now. But the entrepreneur wants millions. What the entrepreneur will gain if his pitch succeeds in a month or in in half a year is more than what even a government worker can earn in a year if he's not. That's right. Like, now you you asked me a question that what would like yeah. to tell Anagix and I was saying that yeah. my my point you know is not to want to talk to someone who is graduating. I want to talk to the students first who are just entering campus. If they if you are listening to me and they will listen to me, mm-hmm. I want to tell them there are two things starting small and I actually told you I'm meditating upon the point of starting small and I came across two reasons why once we start small two reasons. First, for skill acquisition. Yeah. So you're doing it not because you want money from it. You are doing it because you want to learn the method, you want to learn the technique. That's one reason why you should start small. That's why you should enjoy the pain of starting small. The second reason is for profit maximization. And now, in profit maximization, you start small because you cannot, you may not be open to loans. So you actually have the patience to plow back your profit, watch your business grow. Plow back your profit and watch your business and grow. When you say start small, it means that I can start my poetry farm with one farm. That's what it means. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. Oh, what do you mean? Exactly? <laughs> because if I start one agri farm, I can start it. Yeah, 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 start smaller. <laughs> because <laughs> to somebody starting with one million birds is small. Yeah. Another person starting with, with 100 birds is, is big. The okay. Of small. <laughs> uh, you respect to your resources. Mm-hmm. The resources are okay. mm-hmm. now. If you have one poetry, one bird. Uh, well, if I want birds, you want yes. to start poetry farm. Yeah, people have done that. Huh? It's great. <laughs> and how many of them are succeeded? <laughs> and how many of them are succeeded? An assumption. An assumption. You know. You know. I wanted us to also look at something else. Um, you know, I was talking about the fact that I research about Africa. I was just looking. Then I went to America, right? The Western world in general. I was trying to figure out how entrepreneurs they how they are coping with the various crises that are plaguing the world. There's a global financial crisis mm-hmm. that has been going on for some time now. Inflation rates is everywhere. Yeah. Recently, a relative of mine told me that $100 now in the U.S. is almost, it can get you, it can even get you food because of the rising cost of living. Mm-hmm. But here in Cameroon, is a lot of money, yeah. 50K. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was trying to look at things from the American perspective. I was trying to study it to understand. It's almost the same thing. It was I I think the the it's I don't know if it's a journal or a newsletter I read from a from a a company that they call them the School of Hard Knocks. School of Hard Knocks is, is for entrepreneurs. They they interview entrepreneurs, those are failed and those who have succeeded. And to share their perspective. They always ask them, if you were twenty years old, what would you do and stuff like that. So it they made me to understand that it's almost the same figure. More than eighty percent of American startups fail in the first year. And in the first five years, the remaining twenty percent, more than sixty percent of it, of them still fail. Mm-hmm. Then I look at it, I was like, okay. In America, for example, in the agri sector in America, I as an agricultural economics, right? I was taught last year that um, the world, the, the 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 world generally has a problem with USA because USA is the highest country in the world that subsidizes their agricultural sector, mm-hmm. and. Most especially they are dairy sector. Yeah. The, the government pumps in billions every year, billions of dollars every year. Just that they are, they are, they are dairy sector should be very, very competitive. You understand? But people still venture in it, despite the healthy climate. People still venture in it and still fail, hopefully. Now, when I was, when I was going through some articles from this um, company, and now they ask him, I said, that, hey, if in America that everything is very easy, they are feeling. Year two, 
We are even feeling our own failure self is just the worst. <laughs> you understand? Isn't it better to maybe to go go and start working in America? Maybe in my city quietly because oh, I'm trying gosh. to prove to you that look, entrepreneurship in America is hard. Yes. Yeah, it's hard. You understand? So why should I not go and look for my job? After all, why are the business is collapsing or Wait, what? Peter, I'm earning Peter. my salary. You understand? That's how I was looking at it. Because look, like you said, the mindset issue is there. Mm -hmm. Bro, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever started a business? Yeah. Please. Have you ever done a business? I mean a business owner you have you have you have dedicated your life to that business owner. No, this is my bed. Have you ever? Mm, not really. Yeah, no, yeah, not there. Okay. <laughs> okay. But have you done any business? Yeah. Was yeah. the business successful? So it's yeah, some extent. Was it successful? Is it yes or a no? Yes, was it was it successful? successful. For the time it lasted. For it was. It was successful for the time it lasted. And why did you stop the business? Because I had to move. Okay, you, you changed priority. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. What I wanted to make you to understand is that entrepreneurship is more difficult than what we are seeing here. Yeah. No matter. It's yeah. more difficult yeah. than what we are seeing here. It's not everybody that has a heart to bet. Not that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about one ex bet. I'm talking I about understand. entrepreneurship. As an entrepreneur, when you invest your time in something, it's a bet. You can fail, you can succeed. But as an employee, you are guaranteed your salary as far as you keep to the norms of the company. It's more difficult. But Peter, you know, when you, the more you talk, difficult. the more you realize we're saying you. the same thing. We're saying the same thing. See, you're not an entrepreneur because you set up a business. Because that business can fail. Mm -hmm. But will you still remain an entrepreneur after the business has failed? It's not the business that makes an entrepreneur. It's the person you are. It's that heart to bet that makes an entrepreneur. You get it. No, so, not to cut you short. You know, we have been, we have derailed from all the entrepreneur stuff. And <laughs> now it's as well. I've left school now. <laughs> and really entered the job market. They're coming back to school. There's this thing of that is around now of uh, the 50k grants. Is it a, what they call this thing? <laughs> It's a award money now for those who have two point five presidential um, presidential prize. Wala. Like. Excellence award. Wala. So that that I'm sure there are some entrepreneurial mindset that will have this. We said that <laughs> this is their fifty k. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I had an argument with my students. We are working on a business. Yeah. You know, but what you know, the capital is about a point one point three million. Yeah. And we succeeded okay to reduce our budget to about you know to work on it. People look at the road. Road. look at the fifty K. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was we reduced it to about eight hundred thousand. Now we were ten, we were ten in my at my level, we we're like, okay. So if all of us get fifty K, boy, we can just sacrifice and Invest 50k times 10. Invest, wait, invest like, all the 50k. Or everybody puts his 50k in the yeah, business. I'm not sure that everybody put that. Yeah, yeah, so allow next him, allow yes. Yes. So next not everybody yeah, can put it. Somebody, it. It, it, you know, not everybody would be at least everybody can put 50% of that 50k. Mm. That was for 500k. Now imagine if we were just sitting and hoping that, okay, the government is faithful and reliable. We trust and thank the head of state for this mighty opportunity. And this business, you no, know, we studied it. All of us have about two point five GPA, so we are sure that okay, when this fifty K comes, bam, we invest in this business, and they do to us what they did to us. I know, I did not, I, <laughs> I did not get the fifty K, <laughs> so I don't know. Did you get the fifty K? Eligible, I got you got you get the fifty K. I was not hoping. I, I, <laughs> I was not hoping. We were hoping, hoping for the money. Me, I did not for the fifty K. Eligible people just who came have more than the two point five GPA do not have the fifty K. So imagine, no, you you are making mention in that the fact that in America. They're subsidizing the dairy industry. Now, they, they, that is the government there is to an extra certain extent reliable. If we were waiting for the reliability of the government to make this happen, it will not work. Let me tell you. But let me just let me just let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. But the entrepreneurial mindset will not stop here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, the person who knows in his business, you 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 directed me towards Lions Den mm -hmm. and um and Right Guns Den. Yeah, then, yeah. One thing I learned from that, watching those videos is that even people whose speeches were not accepted, by the time they were getting out of the interview, they were telling me, I believe in my business, I know it's going to succeed. Even though they gave them obvious reasons why it's not going to succeed, they told them, I believe in my business and I'm going to push for it. So, isn't the entrepreneurial mindset, coming back to the very entrepreneurial stuff, it's not because the government didn't make it that you will give up on your project. It's not because investors isn't giving that you give up on your project. It's not because there's no available solution for the moment that the entrepreneurial guy will give up. But the guy who is just a job seeker will not boy. Can't you so manjo go find my egg and spaghetti Even though it's still very entrepreneurship, but the, the person who has the entrepreneurial mindset will push in until he breaks through. Well, that's true, but you know, 
there are there's, there's, there's some on your point, so okay there are, there are, there are some issues the first thing is that look there are some people that are very entrepreneurial you understand mm-hmm. but certain conditions have to push them you understand mm-hmm. because the way you are seeing it you want you make it to look like no if you are very de- determination is it goes beyond determination yeah if you notice what we have been talking about here, we have not really given an exact, an exact uh, solution to uh, to entrepreneur. We are just brainstorming on, yeah. on a number of things. We and have no not matter how the solution, yes. to whether students in the faculty of agriculture so come out and, and either be entrepreneur, entrepreneur or yes. they have a job. If you That's give me, if you I'm give me a a one minute, yeah. I'll just just coin the let's, let's listen. I was saying that. You first having access to, to funds, that's one of the major issues mm-hmm. that stop people from going to entrepreneurship. It's not because yeah. they don't have their ideas, it's not because they have not they have not seen the vision. But I just cited people that are filled with billions. Yeah, yeah. billions. Uh-huh. No, it, it is because the, there's no funds. For for us in the country, there are no funds. Now I and I met a crop production student who have graduated and I'm mm-hmm. talking about one on two minute boy. See, it's not the knowledge that king, it's the funds, it's not there. So you have to you have to find a way and patch up into something. Mm-hmm. Now it since there is no fun, you can take the longer route. That is the patience route. If you can get the small place, start working it small, small, and get the money. Now the fun is that there is is it's difficult to break through when you're working in a small place. That's why technology comes in. The aim of technology, and I'm an AD student, so I can talk about this. The aim of technology, technology is different from engineering engineering is the mechanical aspect of it and yeah. the use but technology is anything that reduce the cost reduce the stress and increase efficiency reduce the man level also now that is that's where majority of us entrepreneurs don't have we don't have this technological mind say okay it's not just about getting motivated to do something that ability to sit down and reflect 80 percent of the work is done in the brain before it is manifested so if somebody will say, okay, I'll start small, I have my 50 by 50 plot, and for every season I'm going to plan, I'm going to reverse this way and get this one after I invest in this one. If I can get a capital of, if at one point I'm going to have 500,000, mm-hmm. I'll move to half a hectare. And if I have 800,000, I'll go to a hectare. That one, over the years, it will bring the progression. So what I would tell the agricultural student now is go for two things. Go, to, go for the knowledge. You have, you have four years in UB. If you put two years, you invest your two first years knowing that you don't really have money at that time to get knowledge and spread yourself to learn. I'm telling the students, spread yourself to learn for the first two years of your, of your stay in UB. Develop knowledge, go in for the videos, listen to your lectures, study. I mean, open your mind even to global and regional issues. Yeah. The second the second four years, going to grow in, the second two years, I mean, going for to grow a business grow it and I'm, uh, you will not prosper immediately mm-hmm. but take time to grow that business over the years somebody i love somebody like marion um somebody like the vice president of the co production ivan is his name he said he had a two bed two bed um i think i mentioned it last time pepper nursery and he made 50k out of that he was selling it for 15 francs he paid the school fee. i mean that could pay someone's school fee somebody who's praying the gods to send him money and miracle money somebody had two point. beds mm-hmm, of of mm-hmm. you know this is not really a large place yeah but you can get 50k out of that of a pepper nursery, of a pepper nursery. Okay. now if you the next time you can say okay instead of two beds i'll make four beds with the 50k you see the progression i'm talking about now you're no longer going in for knowledge you're going for money and in over four years that two beds of pepper nursery will be give you enough money to start your business normally so you get what I'm saying. So there are two things. If this, if I can propose something to the foreign students, is the first two years go for knowledge. The second two years go for capital so raising. Let's listen to my, uh, That's my Mary. Contribution. Tell us what would you advise girls that are living the faculty of agriculture. What do you advise them to do? I said when I started, it depends on the person. The mm-hmm. instinct. Mm-hmm. People like Vito do other things like it. So it all depends on. I'm not going to say much about it. So it means if a girl is agriculture and is intrapreneurially inclined into how they call this makeup and stuff, you <laughs> advise her to stay there. To stay there. And not do agriculture. And not do agriculture. You have to practice what you learn to learn. Ah, okay. So you cannot just come like that and go and stay in your makeup and so what will you do you when you get me? Uh, maybe she will start I one don't food sense. Drop, drop any conclusions now. So from now yeah. I'm working on myself. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I've listened to all of your opinions and... I have not gotten to Mr. Peter's... No, Mr. I want to start with Peter <laughs> <in> now. <laughs> no, but at least... Let us know, sir. Why are you... 
You know, it's somebody I really admire. Yeah, Peter will tell you. Know, I already know what you say. Peter, let's say what you say. Let's say what you say. I'm starting my phone. I'm talking about him. That's it. You cannot see him saying, okay, I want to go and sign for one job. Oh, where? Why? No, for why? <laughs> So I'm we, to... even before all this, there was one time we discussed about one aero project. Like, so we still need to get back to that so that maybe so we can have some passive income. Yeah, but I love all the way you guys have uh, brought up your uh, your own experiences and um, what you have said about being an entrepreneur and what be not being an entrepreneur or what students should go into or what students should not go into. And I would really urge um, everybody in the comments should pick up where we left off and try to. Discuss about what we've been discussing. Is it good for students to enter into the entrepreneurial sector? That's enter small enterprise, small and yeah, medium sized yeah. enterprises, or should they jobs. go and start learning how to write cover letters, <laughs> resume, filling CVs, <laughs> and everything? Yeah. So I just, I, for, for me, I think being an entrepreneur is really good. It's really good. But as what she was saying, you have to really know where you stand and who you are. Yeah. If you are somebody who follows instructions and you know if your boss tell you that do this, do this, you do it to the best of your capability and that business will work, go and do it and go and apply. You have your money, you have your job security and everything will be fine. But if you know that you are that outgoing person that you don't want somebody to be calling you that I say, sir, what's the idea? Um, this business, this so, you know, say, that's this. Or they can tell you that um, that poetry, that poetry now how, those files are sick. You are the manager. So do, yeah, maybe you are trying to start your own farm somewhere and somebody disturbing your ear. You have for one loan like 100,000 or 1 million and your head is for one pain. And you're like, Mate, you, can, you can just quit you that job. Yeah. So that's just it. If you are not a person that you are outgoing and you want to live your life the way you want to live, I think it's good to have be an entrepreneur. Maybe you are somebody who wants, who wants, who likes to follow order and like, and you know, you want your job security. You don't want your children to maybe start calling you and start telling them, then that they want school fee and start telling them, no, mommy, I've yeah, never yeah, sold my corn or that type of thing. Yeah, you can do, yeah, you can go for your job. So I really like uh, everybody in the comment section to pick it up well, well, left up. Like, subscribe, and share.